All right, Mr. Jackson, if you would come forward, please. All right, Mr. Jackson, can you state your name and your date of birth, please? Tremaine Anthony Jackson, July 12, 1976. All right, and council make appearance starting with the state. Good morning, Your Honor, Ed on behalf of the state. All right, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor, David Cantor on behalf of Mr. Jackson. All right, good morning. Um, and Mr. Cantor, you were ra waiving a reading of what Mr. Jackson was booked in on? Correct, Your Honor. Okay. All right, given that, uh, Mr. Jackson, um, I have had an opportunity to talk with both the, uh, s the county attorney and your attorney in chambers, um, so we have discussed quite a bit. However, I would like to hear from both of them um, prior to getting into release conditions. So I'd like to hear from the state, please. Briefly, Your Honor, um, Mr. Jackson uh, has been, uh, for approximately the last 12 years, a law enforcement officer with the Department of Public Safety. Uh, we as a society community entrust our law enforcement officers with a tremendous amount for the protection of the community uh, and to put individual citizens in positions where they feel safe. Uh, the information before your honor is that Mr. Jackson violated that trust in putting a number of women in impossible positions uh, with pretext and traffic stops all done for the purposes of uh, his own de desires and to pursue various women. Uh, most importantly for the court's uh, attention and, and thought processes is the fact that, that Mr. Jackson would get specific personal information, social media uh, accounts, cell phone numbers of the victims that he put in these uh, impossible positions that the state and Department of Public Safety is articulating as unlawful imprisonment and in kidnapping where these women could not leave and had to comply in that position that we've entrusted Mr. Jackson with. Having that information, having that specific information about the victims puts the community at large but the, those specific victims at risk. The state believes that a $200,000 bond based on everything before the court would be appropriate. Thank you. All right, thank you. And Mr. Cantor. And Your Honor, I'm well aware that uh, in your job, you must assume that the probable, co probable cause statement is correct unless there's other evidence. That being said, of course, he's presumed innocent. And I'd like to point out that Mr. Jackson was a 10-year U.S. Marine Corps vet. Uh, he was deployed to Iraq, um, received a combat uh, citation for that. Um, also, he was uh, with DPS for approximately 12 years. He has seven children in his household. He has two of his children. He also lives with his sister-in-law, mother-in-law, and brother-in-law in a home in Buckeye that he does own. Okay. Uh, he's been aware of this since June. He was placed on administrative leave, did not try to flee, did not contact any of the accusers in this case, and basically um, has been law-abiding. He has no weapons in the household. I've spoken to him about that. So I had asked that given that these are just allegations and that the job is to make sure that he appears in court and also has no contact with any of the victims, um, that he be allowed to be placed on pretrial services and that any bond imposed be the lowest possible because that, uh, if it is a surety bond, that's money that goes to a bondsman that his family will never see again. Thank you. Okay. And does the state have anything to add at this point? All right. All right, Mr. Jackson, um, I did go ahead and appoint an attorney to represent you. Uh, Mr. Cantor, um, if he just, if you decide to have Mr. Cantor represent you um, throughout the proceedings, then he can file a notice of appearance indicating that. But if not, um, I did appoint counsel to represent you. Um, one of the concerns I have, um, particularly in this regard, is uh, the safety of the community. You were in a position of trust when these, when these incidents occurred. So I do believe that a, a bond is appropriate. And um, as I indicated to counsel, I am going to um, order a secured appearance bond of $150,000. If you're able to post it prior to your release from custody, you will be required to wear um, an ankle monitor. Um, Pretrial services will meet with you. They'll go over how you need to keep it charged and operational at all times. You also will be subject to a curfew that they will set. Um, and um, they'll give you the time frames. 
you need to make sure that you are in compliance with the curfew as well as the um, electronic monitor. Conditions of your release is you are to have no contact with any of the alleged victims or any witnesses. You are not to be in possession of any weapons. Um, and the rest of the conditions are pretty straightforward. Do you have any questions of me at this time? No, Your Honor, I do not. Okay. Counsel, is there anything either of you have to say at this time? Not from state. Nothing further. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. So, uh, Mr. Uh, if you would step over there, you can sign for your paperwork. All right? Thank you. All right. Thank you.